Greetings. In this video, I will define, uh, present an example of how to calculate the determinant of concretely the 3 by 3 matrix, in this case, uh, using combinatorics and using the idea of uh, permutations um, of free numbers in the case of 3 by 3 matrix matrices because um, unlike the more more usual way how determinants are calculated in this case I will uh, use um, combinatorics uh, and apply them uh, a little bit and also I will use the idea of something called the elementary product for a matrix um, to basically in the end evaluate the determinant and get the same result like one gets using the more uh, often used method which basically uh, results in the same um, products added and subtracted in the same way but in this case we will do it without for example using the 3 by 3 matrix and going along a row or a column and reducing it uh, multiplying uh, more smaller 2 by 2 matrices instead I will actually take into account all the products uh, of uh, the kind that we usually actually get uh, without one necessarily realizing when a matrix a larger matrix than 2 by 2 is broken down into smaller ones and then we will see that if all of this is added after some minor changes it actually gives the result for the determinant so here i will see here i will show what that what i mean by that so we can start with looking at the matrix in general uh, matrix and let's say i really talk about the three by three one so i want a three by three matrix it's going to look something like this three by three means it will have nine entries three in the first row three in the second row and three in the third row and how do we denote these entries in general is there's that we can call them a sub two numbers and these two numbers will first of all be the number of the row and the second number will be the number of the column a one one is the first row and the first column entry and then we continue the same way So one two one three means first row still, but second and uh, third entry. Then I do the same for the second row and the third row. So once we do this, we recognize that there are three rows and three entries for this three by three matrix. And each of these are denoted, each of the entries is denoted this way. And this will turn out to be essential for in a, in a few moments. So now we'll define something called an elementary product. Elementary product is any product of these entries. So in the case of 3x3, three three, of a 3x3 three three matrix, we're looking for product of three entries inside this matrix, such that no two of these uh, um, entries will come from the same row or the same column. So all three entries are individually from a different column and different row at the same time. So how many such products can we have? It is directly related to the size of the matrix. And as a rule, there is uh, n factorial elementary products. So once again, I define something called an elementary product on the matrix. And that means the product of entries of it so these nine numbers that it contains, now I see them abstractly, but in, we'll, we might look at a concrete example if we get to it. And we want to define all the possible products, all the different possible products, such that we take entries, three entries from this, three by three matrix. And in a two by two one, we will take two entries. So all the possible products of two entries, such that they don't come from the same column and same row. And you might already think back to, oh, what is actually done with the two by two matrix determinant rule? And it is exactly that one takes products of uh, um, entries that are not from the same column, not from the same row. But also keeps in mind the minus uh, rule there. And that is a thing that we will gain here also. But it will take a little time. 
So let's look at all the possible products such that we take three entries from the matrix and they are not in the same column and not this not in the same row. I would start and we can go along, let's say the first column for example, and then kind of jump around the matrix and see what other two entries can be chosen such that they're not in the same row, not in the same column, and we can multiply the the entry from the first column by. So here on the right, I will on the right of the screen, I will write uh, the products. And as I said, because it's a three by three matrix, there'll be three factorial such products. So it's the first possible one is one a a a one one. Then I can go down the diagonal a two two a three three. So diagonally like this. So that's the first one. The second one that starts with you know, and, I, and I go along the left column, the leftmost column, just to not get lost. So we know twice I have to start with a sub one one. And after I do twice a sub one with those two variants, where the first variant was the this diagonal and the second one is to jump all the way to a three two and then jump back to a two three. So this is what I'm gonna do now. So before I did that and now I do this. A three two, the third one is a two three. Alright, so we got both that start with a one one. Now I will start with a two one. So the order doesn't matter. This is a product of most probably even real numbers there's there's commutativity but it doesn't matter in which order we put these three but we do it not to get lost in what products we've taken care of and what not yet so if i start with a21 then i can uh, do a32 and a13 or i start a21 and i then do a one two and a three three. And the last two we now need, and those will start with a three one. Then I continue, I can do the main diagonal up to the right. And the second one starting a three one, I can do a one two, this is the other variant, the only second one. So hopefully you get this idea. We always can go along a row or a row column again, and and we don't even have to go along a row and a column. That's such that it doesn't really resemble the the more common um, algorithm for finding a determinant of such a matrix. We can actually really just find whatever method is useful. At the end, one ends up going along the row or a column, for example, but one can choose what method is useful and um, use uh, use that for uh, uh, use that to, to find the different products just to make sure that none of them is repeating we see that uh, these are these should these should not um, repeat so uh, we have these products um, and now there's something called um, permutations taken into account uh, the permutation, if we have three numbers, that means all the different reorganizations, all the different change of order that we put these three numbers in, such that we don't we don't repeat one number twice and we don't leave out any of the three. So for three numbers, there is three factorial um, possible permutations, and we have three different numbers uh, appearing in this uh, in the in the in the indexes of this matrix one two three. And it also is why it corresponds, there's uh, six, that means three factorial of these elementary products, of these three entry products. Um, there will be one permutation of one, two, three belonging to each of them. And that will be a big point now. So I can identify from the indexes of these six products something. Uh, we see in this case, because we were going actually along the left row, uh, the left column, that uh, the column indexes are always the same so the the right number of the two um, in the sub index of a it's always one two three one two three one two three for all of them but the row number is different so I'll write that out so that is um, uh, for the first one is one two three for the first one it's same like the column numbers but for the second one it's already what we have one three two I'm just looking at the index of the row 
Then we have a. So then we have two three one. The next one is two one three. Then three two one. And then three one two. Now the point of all of this is whatever numbers we have in this matrix. Uh, this these will be products and they will always give a number when there's real numbers in the matrix they will give real numbers necessarily and we should be able to just add these six products and get the value of the de um, determinant but we first need to make three of these products minus we first need to multiply three of these six products by minus one but we don't know yet which of them it will be but there is a rule to follow there's a there's a way to determine which of these six products have to have a minus aside such that when we then sum it all up all these six things it will actually equal to the expected result for the determinant of the matrix so how do we decide well i would i would create a small bar here it's not connected to the matrix and anything the only importance of it is that i will write a minus or a plus next to it based on these permutations. So there is this connection now built up. So the connection that we will now use is for these six products, we always uh, identify the permutation. One, two, three, one, three, two, two, three, one, two, one, three, three, two, one, three, one, two. These are three, uh, the, all the six different permutations of the three numbers, one, two, three. And I want to distinguish if the, per if the permutation is a so-called odd permutation or, or an even permutation. How do we find that out? Well, we will count the number of inversions. So whenever there is an inversion, it means that a larger number precedes a smaller number uh, in, in, in this list, in, this permuta in a permutation. So I will always determine um, whether if it's even or odd of a permutation, depending on how many times it happens that the larger number precedes a smaller one. And how I will count it is that I take a permutation, go to the most left number and look how many numbers on to, the, to its right are smaller. Then I take this number, keep it, go to, uh, go to the right, one number to the right. Again, I repeat this process for the next number, for the number one right of it and I go all the way to the last number and I add all these results. So I'll show it um, exactly. So for this permutation, I go from the left. One, how many numbers are smaller th uh, in the rest of it? Well, uh, none of them are. Then two is just bigger and again, w to the right of it, there's just three. So none, none are smaller and for three, there's nothing left. So zero. So here it's zero. And when this number, this final number is even, then we call it an even permutation and I assign a plus. That means that this product will, when everything is added up, will have a plus. And when the permutation has an odd number of these inversions, it will be an even permutation, I will assign a minus. And then in the product, the product will get this minus. And when everything is added up, it will be the, 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 the uh, belong to one of the three that will have a minus. So one, three, two. For one, for the first uh, number from the left, we go from the left. How many to the right are um, smaller? Zero. For three, it's one. And for two, it's no none left. We don't go back to the one. So it's three and one is smaller. So it's one in total. That means odd. And that means there will be a minus here. Then for two, three, one, we start with two. How many to the right are smaller? One, just the one. So one, one. Then we go to the right once. 3. How many are smaller? 1. So it's 2 in total. That means it is even and we assign a plus. Then the next one is 2, 1, 3. Going from the left, 2 is larger than 1, but not than 3. So there's 1 for 2. 
then we go to the right one is there's nothing smaller to the right of it so it's just one that is odd and there is minus therefore then for the four for the fifth one already um three it's larger than two or larger than one so that's two already then we go to the right and two is larger than one so that's one so that is odd and then there is minus therefore and for the last one three is larger than one and two so there that's two so far we go one to the right one is not larger than two and there's nothing left uh, smaller to the right of it so it's two in total so it will be even so as we see it ends up being the way that exactly three end up being um, having a plus because their permutation um, the corresponding permutation we we, we created was um, was uh, even and free end up having a minus so what this means is now we can add up these six things together and we will get the value of the determinant of 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 this matrix so we might as well try it with a with a with a real matrix with some numbers that we choose so let's do 1, 2, uh, 0, 5, 6, 2, 3, 2, 1. So what is, the, what is the determinant of it? Well, actually, we can do it like this. We can put these things out there. Usually, if you don't know the determinant, you don't do the normal brackets and you just put the vertical lines there. But um, yeah, it doesn't matter anymore. We'll just write it like this. So just to make sure this is zero. So now we just refer back to this and we know that the determinant will be to add up all these things together. And we do have the signs, so we know which one will be minus, which one will be plus. And then we have also to we also have to refer to the individual entries. So a11, a22, a3 are one, six, one. So it's uh, six. Then we do minus and uh, we do a11, a32, a23. So that it will be 1, 2, and 2. So that's 4. Then we add a plus for the third, third one. That's A21, A32, um, A13. So A21 is uh, 2. So it's 2 uh, times 2. So it's 4. Uh, 1, 3 is 3. So it's 12. The fourth one is minus um, a21. So that is 2. a12 is um, 5. So it's 10. 10. Uh, a33 three three is 1. So it's 10. Um, then we can um, subtract the one starting with a31 um, the fifth one so a31 is 0 and then the rest doesn't matter because the first one was 0 so this is this and the last one will have a plus a31 starting a2 a12 so zero uh, so again actually it's again 0 so they, that saves some time so in the end um, it ends up being it's minus uh, it's 2 plus 14 minus 10 it's 4 so that is the result we got for this and now if you use another method for evaluating determinant which basically goes in the end it results in the same thing this is the same result one can get when going along a row or a column and uh, the the, the um, yeah the, me the other methods or basically other techniques to remember how to take determinant, they will result in the same. So one can verify for himself that for this matrix we had here, one can get to the very same result also using other techniques. But this technique uh, was interesting because it related these permutations of actual the indexes that were changing uh, out of what we chose to, uh, to our choice of the signs. And then we could define the determinant as to add these six things.